Just say you are giving a lot of support. And sometimes you might you might see children being almost mollycoddled or like or sometimes patronized, like, are you okay? You should, you know, is, is, is there such a thing as how much support is too much support? Yeah, yeah. very good question. Okay. We should always be one step behind, okay. not one step ahead. And by one step behind, I mean we should be there to gently follow where they are leading us, to help them when they stumble and fall to get back on their feet again. We shouldn't be trying to anticipate every possible difficulty they can face because we can't accurately anticipate everything. We have to be patient. We have to realize, I think the most important thing, it isn't their fault, it's their brain's fault. Their brain, if they're young ones, won't let them sit still for 40 minutes during literacy time. Uh, you know, we have lessons that are far too long in our junior and senior infant classes. 30 minutes is a long time for the average expected four or five year old to sustain their concentration. If you happen to be four and five and you have ADHD, then you may get three minutes out of those 30 where they're actually with you. That's why we have a, a multi-sensory curriculum in primary school that focuses on mixed ability active learning experiences. Is it hard to do when there's a class of 32 or 35? Yeah. It's incredibly challenging. That's the challenge to take on when you qualify to become a primary teacher. At secondary level, it becomes more complicated because we're subject area specialists teaching to a syllabus to prepare for terminal examinations. Pressure on teachers is enormous. Pressure on parents is equally enormous. They want their children to learn, they don't. Sometimes we can protect too much. I'm telling parents and teachers that if you could actually engineer an environment which was stress-free for any given child and didn't present them with frustration, you would cripple them for life because they would not acquire and internalize coping skills. And those are the most important things for adults and children to learn. How to cope with the unpredictable, how to cope with the unexpected, how to cope with difficult people. And those can be your friends, your teachers, or a parent, or an auntie, or an uncle, or a stranger in the street. We have to have a repertoire of skills. To mollycoddle your child and put them in cotton is a recipe to uh, disempower them throughout the lifespan.